get started. So today is the, uh, the last class we have, um, I mean, the last class of the statistics before the Thanksgiving. So we don't have class on Wednesday, but we will have class next Monday. Uh, next week, we only have one class. So next Monday, we have our last class. But next Wednesday, um, I'll be in my office to answer um, any questions that you may have. Um, so today, we are going to finish chapter 12. Uh, before that, uh, I want to discuss two questions for, from your assignment. So chapter 9b assignment will be due today. I want to talk about two questions in the assignment. And by the end of class, we will have uh, a quiz. And I will provide paper, so you just need um, half a pen. Uh, the first question I want to discuss is uh, question number 13. So question number 13 in your chapter 9b assignment. So in this question, we are given Be good. Okay. So in this question, we are given a data table. So, so we got 20 samples. The sample size is 20. Uh, we have all the data here. And they told us the mean is this number, and we have a standard deviation. So the first question, part A, is to construct a 90% constant interval for the mean. It, it, it already told us the constant interval is for the mean. So for both constant interval and hypothesis testing, we need to figure out is that about proportion or mean. It told us it's about mean. So let's, uh, let's follow the instruction. Let's open the data table in the second. So because it's about mean, so let's go to stats, t stats, one sample. And in this case, we can use either with data or with summary because we have the raw data, we have the data table, and we have the mean, we have the standard deviation. So let's just use data. We don't have to go back and check the, uh, the mean and standard deviation. And we need constant interval. And let's see the constant level is. So 90%. Uh, let me just change it to 90%. So we got, uh, so we need those two numbers, the lower limit and upper limit. Let me put the number there. So the lower limit, two decimal places. Upper limit. Okay, that's a constant interval. That's a, that's an easy one. But the next one is asking for the margin of error. So what is our margin of error? So if I go back there, it has lower limit, upper limit. It doesn't have the margin of, of error. So can we have the margin of error based on the information given in, in the output? So this is 
one margin of error. So from the center to the lower limit, from the center to the upper limit, that's another, the other margin of error. So the difference between the upper limit and the lower limit is two margin, of, two margin of error. So that's why if we calculate the difference between the lower limit and upper limit, we will get two margin of error. And if it's asking for the margin of error, we just divide that. So that's how we do that view. Or you can calculate, the other way is you calculate the, the critical value. So the T, uh, here we don't have the T, but we do have the standard error. We know the margin of error is equal to the critical value. So in this case, the critical value is T times standard error. So it's, it's given the standard error. The standard error is over there, 5.099. And the only, the, the only thing you need to do is to find the T. So if you want to go this way, that's also fine. But the, the, I think the, the easiest way is to get the difference between the lower limit and upper limit and then divide by T. So any questions for part B? And the last question, the margin of error is equal to the calculation by two, that's going to be 8.82. Is it there? 8.82. What is the concept in the interval given uh, using the given uh, population standard deviation? Uh, okay, what is the okay, okay. How would the constant interval change if you had assumed that? The standard deviation of the population was known to be 23. So how do we come to this calculation? So before we do the calculation, um, do we think the confidence interval will be wider or it's going to be narrower? So if we use the um, the population um, standard deviation. So if we are not free yet, let's let's leave this question for now. So let's uh, let's do the calculation. Let's get the the calculation done first. Let's go with this one. We are given the uh, population standard deviation. So if we are given the population standard deviation, let's use the Z stats. So when we were talking about the hypothesis testing and the constant interval for the, uh, for the population mean, uh, we said in most of the cases, we do not know the population standard deviation. Then we use the T stats, but just in case we know the population standard deviation, let's use the Z stats. So critical value will be the Z, so Z stats, one sample, Let's just use some. So sample mean, so we have the sample mean which is 49.01. Uh, this is population standard deviation. So the population standard deviation is 15.23. Uh, sample size is still So constant interval, uh, 90%. had earlier without the uh, population standard deviation. It's narrower. So it's narrower. So of course it's narrow. So when we are, so for the constant interval, let's remember one principle. So if we are given more information, the constant interval at the same constant level will be narrow. For example, if we, are, we have a larger sample size, the constant interval will be narrow. If we know the population standard deviation, the confidence interval will be narrow. So that's the principle. So if we don't have that information, it will be wider. It will be, it will be wider. 
So if we only have the sample information, the, the confidence interval will be wider because we don't have uh, enough uh, information in, in that case. So we have to make the confidence interval larger to achieve the same confidence level. So if we have less uh, uh, information or le uh, less sample size, so we have to make a wider confidence interval to achieve the 95% or 90% confidence. So the, the rest of the job is to put uh, the numbers in there and make sure the, the confidence interval will be narrow. So any questions for part B, the last part? If not, let's, I won't discuss the, the last question. Let's see this one. Let me show you the answer because the procedure is more important. So here we have two questions. Uh, police reported the average speed of cars driving on a busy street by a school. The sample size is 36. Uh, so it was determined that the average amount over, so over uh, the average amount over the speed limit for those sample was 30.5 uh, miles per hour. With the standard, we have a standard. So this is the mean. This is the standard deviation. And we have the 99% uh, confidence interval for, uh, for the sample is, so this is the lower limit and we have the upper limit. So the lower limit is 10 point, so that's a 10.32 and the upper limit is 16.68. So the margin of error is just like this one. We calculate the difference. So 16.68 minus 10.32, which will give us 6.6.36. So that's two margin of errors, but we only need one. So we divide it by two, that will give us 3.18. So that's a margin error. So we just calculate the difference between the lower limit and upper limit, then divided by two. That, that's it. So that's the margin error. So the middle question is the sample size. So the question, the part B is what sample, what size sample is needed to reduce the margin of error to no more than plus or minus two. So we need to reduce. So here's the margin of error, 3.18, but in the question part B, we need to reduce the 3.18 to two. So the new margin of error that we want to achieve is two. So when we want to make the confidence interval narrower, that means we have to increase our sample size. So we need, absolutely we need more, we need more sample size. So if you remember, we had, uh, I think in the previous, uh, I think chapter 9A assignment, um, we have, I think, one or two questions about calculating the, uh, the sample size. So given the margin of error and given the confidence level, we want to uh, calculate um, what sample size we need. So that is going to be similar here. Let me remove this one. So let's utilize the expression for margin of error. So we know the margin of error is equal to the critical value. So it's about mean, so the critical value is t. Okay. So the, uh, the parameter for the t is the degrees of freedom, which is sample size minus one. So that's critical value times standard error. So standard error, so let me do this one more time. So standard error is equal to, so in this case, sample standard deviation over square root of your sample size. So for part B, we are given this one. So margin of error is equal to two, we, we know this one. Uh, sample standard deviation is given, I think it's given here. Okay, it's given there. Um, we need the, the sample size. So when we were talking about the 
question in chapter 9a assignment, we were using the B as the uh, critical value. So if we know this one, we know this one, we know this one, we can solve the equation to get n. But the problem in this question is, this guy, this critical value also depends on the sample size. If we do not know the, uh, if we do not know the sample size, how do we get the critical value p? So it seems like we don't have enough information to solve this one. So if we do not know the sample size, let's move on. Let's replace this critical value. We don't know the sample size, so we cannot get the critical value p. Let's replace it with the uh, with p. The v follows a standard normal distribution. We don't need any additional information to get the v. The critical uh, the constant level is ninety nine percent. So based on the constant level or um, the constant level, we can get the v. So this one. Let me write down all the information. So margin of error is equal to two, so that's what we need. Two is equal, so let's leave this equal now. Times standard deviation, go back seven. So seven over square root of sample size, so we need to calculate the V, the, the critical value. So we can use, let's just use that one to do it, uh, to get the critical value P. So that calculator, uh, normal between so zero one we don't have to change that uh, the constant level go back and double check so the constant level is ninety nine percent so let put let me put point nine nine there and this let's compute and the critical value is the is a positive number. So that's going to be 2.5 uh, seven six. Let's keep three that's one point six. So we have all the numbers that we need to solve this equation. We have the margin of error, we have the critical value, we just get the critical value. We have the we're given the standard deviation only the sample size uh, in that moment. So the last step is to solve this, this equation to get the sample size. Uh, called sample size. So it shows the detailed procedure for solving the, um, the, the assignment question for in, in the previous uh, assignment. So it shows it shows you all the detailed procedure. So for solve this question, you only need to refer the the, proce the procedure that I give here. So if you are not sure how to solve this kind kind of way. So you can refer to that document. So it's in the chapter nine folder. And I also uploaded a document for constant interval. I listed all the possible scenarios that you need to consider how to find the uh, standard error, uh, lower limit, upper limit, margin of error, and how to find the, let's say, critical value. So I have a snapshot of the, in the, for the stack punch. So you can refer to this uh, document. So it's also under chapter nine folder and under chapter ten folder. Uh, I think I got the wrong document, but I'll, I will replace that with the right. But for this question, you have to. So the key part is to replace the T with the V. So that's.
that that comes pretty good. So any questions on, on this one? I think that's all the questions that I want to discuss. So let's get back to the to the uh, the chapter sales review. Uh, we have two topics today. So one is to discuss uh, the cost and interval for the difference between two means. The, the other one is a special two sample t test. So in the previous lecture, we discussed how to uh, use hypothesis testing to estimate the difference between two population means. So what we said is, okay, we need to set up our null in the alternative hypothesis. So in this case, we are not studying single population parameter. So we are studying the difference between, between two population means. So that's a null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis so the statement is the difference between two population mean not equal to the difference or greater than or less than. So it's not just one mean, we have two mean here. Then we calculate the sample statistic. We translate the sample statistic to the test statistic. Then we put the test statistic into the corresponding t-curve. Then we have to find the p-value. We use the p-value to compare, uh, we compare the p-value with our alpha value, the, the same result. And there, there are two ways to estimate or study the population parameter. So this is one way to do the hypothesis testing. The other way is to build a constant interval. So this constant interval is to capture the difference between the two means. So this interval is capture delta. So it's, cap it's trying to capture the, the value of the delta, the difference between the two means. And for this constant interval, we have, we still have, it still follows the general uh, format. Estimate plus minus the margin of error. So the estimate here is the sample mean one minus sample mean two. The first sample mean minus the second sample mean. So that's our estimate. Plus minus the margin of error. The margin of error is still equal to the critical value times the standard error. The critical value, t, statistics t, and based on the degree of freedom in the previous slide, we already talked about how to calculate the degrees of freedom. And the standard error, we have the expression for calculating the standard error. So sample, standard deviation square over the sample size plus the one for the second sample. So that's how we calculate uh, the constant interval of the difference between two population means. So the constant interval will give us is, is about the difference between two population means. So we'll do the assignment or in the exam. Let's use the let's use the technology to do this calculation. We don't have to uh, manually put the numbers in. So let's look at uh, before we go to the, the example. Any questions on this one? Example we had. Uh, let's see. So we got so we got a data table, and we want to calculate the ninety-five percent confidence interval. So let's open the let's open the data table in a second. Let's go to step 
that uh, if that two sample with theta. So two sample with theta. We don't. Uh, must, yeah, I don't think we are given the summary data. The mean, the sample mean, sample standard deviation. We, I don't think we have those the information. Then let's go to let's go with with data. We just use the two columns of data that are given to us. Two sample with data. Use that. Let's select the those two samples. So neighborhood one, neighborhood two. So we're not doing hypothesis testing this time. So we do the confidence interval. What is okay? Ninety-five percent. We just we don't have the point ninety-five. That's it. You just select two samples and make sure your confidence level is correct. Uh, let's click on build. So we have the lower limit, we have the upper limit. Let me just copy paste. Two decimal places. So if there, the part B is, uh, if there are in the interval or not, the lower limit is negative, the upper limit is positive, of course, zero is in the interval. So that's going to be yes. Then how do we make conclusions about the hypothesis testing? So in this case, we assume that this no, hypothesis testing, no hypothesis is that those two neighborhoods, for those two neighborhoods, there, there, there's no difference. And the alternative is there is a difference. There is a difference. And we know that based on the constant interval, we know that zero is in the interval. How do we make conclusions about this hypothesis testing? Should we reject the no hypothesis or we fail to reject the no hypothesis? Remember, zero is in the interval that we that we, we just calculated. Fail to reject. Because zero is inverse multiplied with the transitions. So zero is in the interval. That means based on the sample, zero <coughs> is a possible value for the true difference between two population means. So zero is a possible value. So that means we cannot reject this one. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So if zero is in the interval, that means zero is possible value for this true difference, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. But if zero is not in the interval, that means we have enough evidence to say Zero is not a possible value for the true difference between the two population mean. So we fail to reject the H there with the no hypothesis because zero is a is a possible value for the true true difference, true mean difference. See, in this chapter. We are trying to connect the confidence interval with the hypothesis testing. Although we did a confidence <coughs> interval, but we can use the confidence interval to support our hypothesis testing. So any questions on, on this one? about the last topic of this chapter. It's a special uh, t-test. It's called paired t-test. So before we talk about the details of precision, let's talk about what is a paired data. So paired, paired data are the data um, that 
means the observations or your samples are collected in pairs. And observations <coughs> are connected or related to each other. So you you collect your sample in pairs. So just like I have this example, I'm not sure. Um, how many of you guys follow this uh, this tour, Formula One? Not so many. Okay, I think this is very common in, in Europe and uh, Asian countries. Okay. So we have two teams. Of course, in the, in this sport, there are many teams. Those two teams are most famous teams: Ferrari and Mercedes. And we want to compare their performance of their uh, race car. So throughout all the whole season, they have to compete in different um, countries, in different tracks. So if we do this comparison, we have to select different different countries or different tracks. Then we, we just let those two race cars to run, and then we collect data. So maybe the first station is, uh, is Australia. They compete in the Australia, the, that track. So they do, do the running, we collect send, uh, the data. So Ferrari, we have one, Mercedes, we also have one. So we collect the sample in pairs. So in Australia, we collect those two samples. And then they go to China, they do the same thing, we collect sample in pairs, go to Russia, go to Canada, go to US, go to Brazil, and go to Mexico, and so on and so forth. So those collections are in pairs. And when we do the comparison, so those two values, those two samples are related because they are both from US. They are both from US. We cannot compare this one with this one. So the can the the uh, the Mercedes <coughs> performance in Canada with the uh, Ferrari's performance in US, so we cannot do this comparison because they are from different tracks. You know, different tracks have different shapes, different design, different lungs, different uh, difficulty levels. We cannot now do this uh, uh, cross comparison. So those two samples are related, and those two are related, those two are related. So if you, you are familiar with um, racing cars, we know different uh, race cars have different uh, characteristics. Some are have uh, really high absolute speed, some are really good at uh, accelerating and so on and so forth. They have different performance in different times. So this is kind of pair data. So if we do the comparison like this, we collect data like this, it's called pair t test. We, we are still trying to compare the mean of those two populations. We want to compare which which race car is faster, Ferrari or Mercedes. So I just made up those those uh, those samples. Those are not uh, real samples. So that's pair data. So in the neighborhood, in the previous example, when we when we were comparing the two neighborhoods, we just collect the six houses from neighborhood one, we collect the six houses from neighborhood two. It's not pair data. So we, we calculate the average of this one, we calculate the average of the other one, we just do the comparison. That, that's not pair data. And this is pair data. Those two those numbers are collected in pairs. <coughs> so data are Highly related, highly related. So that's pair data. So when you do the hypothesis testing or doing the confidence interval uh, after we finish this uh, topic, you need to think about is your data paired or not paired. So that's one example of pair data. So any questions on pair data? Then when we do the hypothesis testing using the pair data, that's called pair t-test. So in this case, we are still uh, studying the difference between the two means, uh, two means. So we have to satisfy some assumptions. They are not uh, new assumptions. Pair data assumptions, that's for sure. That's the first thing we have to check. The other, one more assumption is independent assumption. We have to make sure the samples are randomly selected, the 10% condition. So we talked about those uh, conditions and assumptions in the previous chapter, normal population assumption, based on your sample size. If your sample size is less than 
15, that means you have to make sure your population uh, distribution is nearly normal. But if your sample size is greater than 40, uh, you should be very safe by using this uh, uh, parameter. Then let's talk about how to find, how to do this hypothesis testing. So the setup of the hypothesis is a little bit different. It's a little bit different from the traditional uh, the pair t test, full sample t test. So the null hypothesis In the no hypothesis, the parameter that we want to study is called mu v. So that's the difference of the two population mean. So let's be clear about the difference. So in the regular two sample t test, we write it like this, mu1 minus mu v. But for the paired data, as we discussed, we do not calculate the mean of the first population. We don't have a mean of the <coughs> second population. It's because they are paired. So we just write it like this, mu d. So that means the, the difference between two of the population means. And for the alternative hypothesis, we still have three options, not equal to greater than or less than. So that's our, that's a little bit different from, um, from the, the regular two sample t test. So mu d, let's remember, if we do the parity test, the population parameter is denoted as mu d. If not, in this format again. Procedure wise is the same. So how do, how do we after we have the sample statistic, how do we get the the t statistic? So here is the expression for the um, t statistic. So the d bar, what is d bar? So d bar is the mean of the differences. Let's just uh, use those, those numbers. So how to calculate the d-bar? Let's calculate the difference between each of those pair data. So let's calculate for Australia, what's the difference? So it's, uh, it's one second. Uh, in China, what's the difference? Negative three. In Russia, it's one. In Canada, it's two. In US, it's negative three. So we calculate the difference from each of those pairs. Then we take the average of those differences. That will give us the D bar. So that's how we calculate the D bar. Then the D bar is our sample statistic. That's our sample statistic. So we calculate the difference between e, <coughs> each pair, then we take the average. That will be our D bar. So the other theorem, of course, that's that's uh, the uh, value in our null hypothesis. It, in, and more, in most of the cases, it's equal to zero. So in, in most of the cases, we can just, uh, just ignore this one here because it's going to be this error. Over the standard error. So standard error is equal to the sample standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. And <coughs> the standard deviation of the SD. So the SD, the sample standard deviation is the standard deviation of the fourth column, the difference column. So we already calculate the differences, <coughs> then we just calculate the standard deviation of that column. That will give us the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation. So that means if we want to calculate the T statistic, we have, as long as we have the sample in hand, that means we, we can calculate all 
we have all the numbers that we need to calculate the teeth the digit. Market chain wants to know if their buy one get one free campaign increases customer traffic <coughs> to justify the cost of the program. For each of the 10 stores, they select two days at random to run the test. So one for one of those days, the program will be in effect. And they want to test the hypothesis that there's no mean difference in the traffic against, so the, the alternative hypothesis is that the program increases the mean traffic. And then they give us the data table. They have 10 stores, they have the, their um, sale record uh, with the, the buy one, get one free uh, campaign and without the buy one, get one free campaign, they have those data. So really, so the part A, the first question is, are the data paired? Are we dealing with paired data or non-paired data? So we want to compare if the buy one get one free strategy works or not. So we collect the sample from 10 stores. In all those 10 stores, they tried the uh, buy one get one free and they want to compare their, their rec sale record with uh, a day without the, the program. Are those data paired? The data are paired because for each of the store, the comparison is about each of those stores. You cannot compare the store one with program with the store two without program. It, 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 it doesn't make any sense. So you have to compare the same, the comparison has to happen in the same store with program without program with program without program to see if it's working or not. So that's, that's paired data. That's paired data. So yes. So the data are paired because measurements of customer <coughs> are taken at each store twice, one during the program, one uh, without the program. So that's the data. Then we need to do some calculation. I think we need to calculate some, like the, the p-value and so on and so forth, but before that we need to calculate the, the mean difference, the d bar. I open the data table in the second. So let's go to that. Still T test, a T test. Then the next selection is different. Let's select a pair. So if you are doing a pair t test, let's let's do this one. Let's select a pair. Let's not let's not select two samples. Let's select a pair. Sample one with program. Sample two without program. Then the next step. So we select the two samples uh, as the first step. Let's check this option. Let's select this option. Option save differences. Let's check this option. Save differences. 
then you will know why I do this. Then different, uh, then the hypothesis testing, the mirror is <coughs> What about our alternative hypothesis? Which one should I select? Not equal to greater than or less than. Not equal to. Not equal to. Any other opinions? Especially the last two um, last two sentences. So they want to test the hypothesis that there is no mean difference in the traffic against the alternative that the program, the buy one get one free program, increases the mean traffic. <coughs> so, by implementing this buy one get one free campaign or strategy, the customer traffic has increased. In that case, you want to know if is greater than zero because it has the keyword increase. It has the keyword increase. So let's select increase or uh, sorry the greater than. Then let's click this too. So we have the the values here, but one more thing you know you may notice is that we have one more column here called differences. Because part part B is asking for the Z bar, the mean difference. Then we have to calculate the difference between um, between each uh, <coughs> pair. Let's see. Let's uh, we have so let's save that for now. What is the bar? We need to calculate the mean of this column. So let's go to the stat summary stat column. I'm not sure if, if the next part is going to ask about the same division or not. So let, let, let me just select this one. So that gives us the mean of that column. So that is the mean is the z bar. The mean is the z bar. Before uh, in the fourth exam, so it's a long time ago. So if you want to calculate the mean, same division, variance, or Q1, Q2, and so forth, you are going to use this one. So column and select the differences, and then I select the mean and standard deviation. Then you click again. You have the mean. And part C is asking for the standard deviation. <coughs> we already did the calculation here. Just copy this. Uh, let's calculate this. So it's going to be six. So standard error. What is the standard error? So we don't have standard error here. Uh, so let's go back to the first calculation we did. Calculation we did standard error, it has the standard error. So we just copy it, the number in there, copy and paste. The T statistic. So the upper window has the T statistic.
white traffic because people market chain wants to know if the traffic increase. So what's the p-value? Okay, let's go back. So p-value is point zero. For B P value, in this case P value is is greater than R for level. So when the P value is greater than R for level, that means we we fail to reject. We fail to reject. The null hypothesis there is sufficient or insufficient action. When we do not reject, it's going to be insufficient. So when we reject, that means we have enough evidence to say that this is wrong. But if we do not have sufficient or enough evidence, we, we just keep quiet. Right? So we just say, okay, we, we, we do not reject. We do not, I do not think the no hypothesis is wrong. So we have insufficient. So that's question number six. This question is really lengthy, it has so many parts. But once you did the calculation in the third bunch, most of the numbers that you need are in the opinion. So you don't have to do uh, additional calculation. So that's so T statistic P value, uh, standard error, degree of freedom, all the numbers are there. So you don't have to do more calculation. So the, the only part uh, that I want to emphasize is so when you do the uh, pair t test hypothesis testing, please click this uh, save differences option. Then you will have this additional column generated. Then you calculate the mean and standard deviation for that column. So that is to answer part B and part C. So, any questions on, on this one? I think I have uh, recorded one video for this question on YouTube. I don't think I have uploaded some okay. So after class, I will upload the, the video for some of the questions in this chapter um, on this. So that's, I think that's the end of this chapter. <coughs> and as I promised, uh, we will do a quiz today. Um, so before the Thanksgiving, um, I will post uh, all your quiz with on Blazeview. I think I have one more, not including this one. I have one more um, quiz to grade, so I will do that uh, before the Thanksgiving. This quiz is similar to the previous, uh, is similar to the last one. I only need two things. Write down the no and alternative. And you need to tell me if your alternative is one sided or two sided. You don't need confirmation. 